Often when we reflect on the life of Mary, we uh, think about her humility and her obedience, or we might talk about her uh, role as intercessor. But today we uh, re- reflect on, on, on Mary as a sign of victory. The Assumption uh, declares that because of her faithfulness on earth towards, at, at, well, at the end of her life, she was assumed body and soul uh, into heaven. Now, you may have seen some artworks of Mary sort of flying through the sky or towards the sky, right, towards heaven. Uh, but, of course, it's important to remember that heaven is not so much a place, but it's a dimension. It's a different state of life, a different state of being in the presence and the life of God. Mary was assumed, she was transferred into that dimension. Uh, When we talk about body, uh, it wasn't her human body that was transferred into that dimension, but her glorified body. We see something of that with Jesus, right? In the resurrection appearances, he walked through walls and he looked different. Uh, Not to be confused with our human bodies, so Mary was, 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 was transferred into that dimension, and that's why we, we talk about her as intercessor. It's a, it's a bit more of a mystical understanding than Mary going to this place called heaven, but Mary now in this dimension of God's presence, and therefore we can connect with her as we can connect with the saints, right? What the, what the assumption is really celebrating is that the fullness of Mary has realised the fullness of of divine life, right? Body, soul, spirit of Mary, fully realising the, the beauty, the peace, the joy, the fullness of divine life. Mary, uh, we could say, is the first to fully benefit from the gift of the cross. And so she's a sign for all of us. She's a sign of victory, a sign of victory. You know, when we come up against it, we're like, ah, oh, it's too hard. We look to Mary. She's a sign of victory. She's a sign of hope. We, we, we see a, a little representation of that in our first reading today uh, uh, from the, the book of Revelation. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman adorned with the sun, standing on the moon, and with the 12 stars on her head for a crown, this sign of victory, huh? Some scholars would attribute that to Mary, victorious in her heavenly state. It's also important for us to recognise, though, that Mary's heavenly victory was preceded by her earthly victory. Yesterday, uh, if you're with us for Mass, uh, I was reflecting on how the saving power of God should start to impact our life now, right? It's not just for the future, after we die, but, right, but now, here and now. God's saving hand should start to touch us and, and impact our lives. We, we should start to see God, the victory of Christ manifesting in and through our life. And Mary is a great example of that. Despite her challenges, she lived here on earth with a deep hope and confidence in God. And it wasn't because of her own merits, but it was because she was aware that God's presence and power was over her life. She knew it. In all her humility, she knew it. She claimed it. She knew she was moving under, constantly moving under God's victorious hand. And that comes out in our gospel today, huh? This is really a song of victory, Mary's song of victory. My soul proclaims the greatness of of the Lord, exalts in God my Saviour because he has looked upon his lowly handmaid. When she says looked upon, she's not saying, oh, he looked upon me from afar, like from a distance, but he looked upon me as in he... He has come upon me and saved me and blessed me and filled me. (laughs) He's looked upon me. She knew it. She knew she was walking constantly in the presence of her victorious God. 
This is where Mary's witness is so important for us. You see, if we want to share in her heavenly victory, heavenly victory, wherever heaven is, <laughs> um, we need to become, just like Mary, we need to become more familiar with the victory of Christ over our lives now. We need to welcome this victory constantly. We need to learn to walk in it. We need to allow the victory of Christ to change our minds and hearts, the way that we interpret situations, challenges, various things that we come up against. We need to allow the victory of Christ to, to change the way that we react, the way that we, we think about things, the way that we see and interpret. The heavenly victory begins now with the earthly one. This is especially important for us to do when we're faced with challenges, right? And, and I think probably the best way we can do this is, is just by, by continually affirming the truth over our lives. As you come up against something difficult, something challenging, something disconcerting, you might say to yourself something like, Jesus has already won the victory over sin, over suffering, over death, and his victory is over me. Right? I am the son and daughter of God. I am a co-heir with Christ, which means I share in his spoils, the spoils of his victory. And even though I don't fully experience this victory right, ne- right now, even though I'm coming up against this challenge and I'm, I'm experiencing grief, I'm, I'm confused, I'm overwhelmed, I choose to live from this deepest truth that Christ's victory is over me and, and his victory has the final word. And so I will keep, I will keep persevering. I will keep moving forward in faith and in hope and in love. I will remain faithful and generous in what God is inviting me to do. It's important that we keep reaffirming the truth over our lives, huh? even when we don't feel it, even when we don't see it. This is faith, living from that different dimension, not the dimension that we see with our eyes, but that we see with our heart. And we keep claiming that over our life. We keep claiming it. We keep moving forward in faith and trust until the day when our salvation is fully realised.